My name is Benin Samanchi. And I'm Cesar Alamon. And our project is called Robotic Vision, Numerical and Color Perception. So the reason we made this program is because we wanted a reduced, yet efficient and effective program that could detect numbers and colors. And this is important to the world because many projects are based upon color and number detection. So we thought if we made a reduced version of it, it would be easier and more accessible and more efficient as well. And it not only would improve what's already existing, it will um, outcome many new inventions as well, so it will change the technology world completely. So when we first approached this, we had a very complex solution, but we soon abandoned that after talking to the faculty and realized that there was a more simple and effective solution. So what we basically did is we took a picture, we split it into separate quadrants, and from there, each pixel from the quadrant will be guided to a certain variable and then it will compare to, uh, to what we have to, and what we got and then it will decide what number it was. So this is the quadrant algorithm that Caesar was mentioning. Basically what it does is it will take a picture and it will split that picture into 32 quadrants. Now the quadrants can vary based upon what picture you're comparing. If you have pictures that are very similar and don't have much distinction, then you're going to want to have you're going to want to have lots of quadrants. But if you have quad um, pictures that are very distinct and have many differences, then you can have 10 or even 15 quadrants. So what it does is basically it will sense that each dark pixel in the quadrant and it will come out with an array. An array is a list of many numerical values, and it will have each amount of pic each amount of dark pixels in each quadrant. And with that, we can perform many tasks, such as comparing them to what we expected, and we can perform many tasks. So this is the code that we invented for um, the nu numerical detection. Basically, what it does, as I mentioned before, it uses the quadrant algorithm. So instead of showing you the whole code, which was 400 lines long, we, we were just we're just going to show you for one number, the number one. So at the top, what it does is it basically expresses which quadrant it's detecting. So we have uh, coordinates at the top, x is less than 32 and y is less than 48. And basically, what that kind of recognizes that we're saying we want the, we want the dark pixel values in this specific quadrant. And we get eventually what will happen is we'll get the um, values for every quadrant, and we can compare that to the ideal value. So you're never going to get the same values because it'll always vary by which place you place which place you place the robot. So what we do is we compare what we get with the number we expected, which is the ideal value, and we get a difference. And with that difference, we can conclude that whichever difference is the least, that's the number. So here we have our color detection code. And what this code simply does is it takes a picture, it shows a picture, but it also expresses the pixels. But when it expresses the pixels, it leaves them scattered. So what we did is we created three separate variables, R sum, G sum, and B sum. And all those colored pixels, which are red, green, and blue, will be placed into their categories and into their variables. But then we have clumps of just pixels, and we don't want that. We just want the average. So we set another set of variables called R average, uh, R average, G average, and B average, and we would divide those um, those sums by 49,152, because that's how many pixels there are according to Magnus. <laughs> and then we would print those values just for reference, and then, then we would send an if statement. If R average is greater than 200 and B and G average are less than 190, beep once, indicating, and print red, indicating that it's number red. The color. And it's not just limited to the color red, that's just an example. We have many other colors, we just didn't want to fill up the page with all of them. So here we have our accuracy graph, and what we did, where our experiment was, is we put the, the robot in front of separate, in, in front of the numbers, ten times, but we didn't just leave it in the same spot, we moved it around. And as you can see, it is accurate, except for eight, because it kept thinking it was a three, but that's because of the camera. If the camera was better, all those numbers would go up easily. And it's not only the camera, it's actually the picture as well, and the placement of where it takes the picture. If we had a more uh, precise graph, a precise picture and a perfect picture of it, then it could easily become 100% accurate. So, um, as we mentioned before, this is the basis to many other inventions that can outcome. And an example is all the great inventions that have been shown today. Well, some of them, all of the, a lot of them are, um, are based on color and number detection as well. So, Caesar's going to talk about some of the possible applications that could outcome from our number and color detection. So, some applications may include military. In the military, you can, the robot can be taught a specific camouflage for a friendly soldier and identify friendly soldiers from enemy soldiers. It could also be used for education for children. It could teach them colors, numbers, in the most critical development stage. It could also help visually impaired um, individuals 
see what they cannot see. And it's not just limited to this, the options are endless. So we would like to thank all of the faculty as everyone else has, but specifically we'd like to thank Carl Magnus Delight. <laughs> <laughs> Without him, this would not have been possible. <laughs> So it beeps the number it recognizes. I think you can hear it a little bit. Thank <laughs> you. 